president began this campaign with the same attitude with which he has approached so many of the serious problems of the past three years. He sought to create the impression that there was no campaign on at all, just as he had sought to create the impression that all was well with the United States and that there was no depression. The present leadership in Washington stands convicted, not because it did not have the means to plan, but fundamentally because it did not have the will to do. And that is why next week, the American people will register their firm conviction that this administration has utterly and entirely failed, failed to meet the great emergency of modern times. exhortation that to abandon or to change one letter or one word of his policies would mean the destruction of this great republic. I have, I believe, avoided the delusion that this is a campaign of persons or of personalities. To indulge in such a fantastic idea of my own individual importance would be to betray the common hope and the common cause that has brought us all together this year. I welcome the privilege of standing on this platform tonight with Governor Roosevelt and saying what will not be news to him or to the President of the United States. And that is that I support without qualification Roosevelt and Garner for the two highest offices in the gift of the United States. I hope America, chastened by disaster, suffering as she is, will rise to that liberal leadership which will replace suspicion with confidence and which never is afraid. And speaking of being afraid, let me pay my respects to the threats, expressed or implied, which are now being used to influence our votes. There are more than 10 millions of people out of work in this country. Some of them are in want and others threatened with it. Many have lost their homes on mortgage foreclosure. Others are threatened. Many have lost their farms. Others are threatened. And so we have millions of people sensitive, not only to the conditions of today, but apprehensive of tomorrow. <coughs> it is no time to make threats. And so I hope that in this election, we shall get a true reflex by votes, uninfluenced by fear or favor of the intelligence and of the intuitions of the great masses of our people. Broadly, I trust the intuitions of the many more than the, su the assumed superintelligence of the few. What we need is a full and free and honest indications of how the millions of this country feel inside themselves. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, what I am concerned about in this fast-moving world, in a time of great crisis, both at home and abroad, 
is not so much, I'm not so much concerned about a program as a spirit of approach. Not so much concerned about a mind as a heart. A program lives today and dies tomorrow. A mind, if it be open, may change with each new day. But a spirit and a heart is as unchanging as the tide. It's all over now. These reports that came in during the evening were all fine and just what we expected. It was only right that we wait until we heard from President Hoover. And we have a wire from him now which the governor should see immediately, indicating that he concedes the election and congratulates the governor. And I also received a letter a moment ago, or a wire a moment ago, from Everett Ch Ch uh, Saunders, chairman of the Republican Committee, and he too extends Hardy's congratulations. Now it's all over. Congratulations to you. Well, of course, Jim, when Saunders gives up, it's all over. But there's only one thing that worries me a little. How on earth did you manage to lose those five states? Well, that's something I'm anxious to know myself. Bad teamwork, Jim, bad teamwork. <laughs> I am glad of this opportunity to extend my deep appreciation to the electorate of this country, which gave me yesterday such a great vote of confidence. It is a vote that had more than mere party significance. It transcended party lines and became a national expression of liberal thought. It means, I am sure, that the masses of the people of the nation firmly believe that there is great and actual possibility in an orderly recovery through a well-conceived and actively directed plan of action. Such a plan has been presented to you and you have expressed approval of it. This, my friends, is most reassuring to me. It shows that there is in this country unbounded confidence in the future of sound agriculture and of honorable industry. 
this clear mandate shall not be forgotten. And I pledge you this, and I invite your help in the happy task of restoration.